Welcome everyone to the Aussie DJs podcast. Welcome Andrew and James, the only two people actually <laughs> watching the podcast. This this even ruins everything because I had like a whole thing of I'd actually already pre-written that I was going to say that we were the only um, gambling show where one of the hosts, in this case Marcus, guarantees your money if you follow his tips and it loses. But <laughs> it's not the same if he doesn't show up to. Because he doesn't want to fulfill that promise, I guess. Well, no. He, well, he can't dispute it, so... I wonder if he could be legally held to that if someone else said it on behalf of you. <laughs> That's, let's find out. Yeah. <laughs> someone can sue. All right. Let's, let's get going then. Um, right. Yeah, well, um, obviously this is the round of the underdogs. Yeah, so all right, let's just let's just talk about an intro. So obviously last year we did all sorts of DJ gambling. Some of us won. Um, one of us won. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, how did you? Do? I don't say some because some implies more than one, and that's absolutely definitely not true. Well, one person doubled their money and more. So um, two people didn't. Two people didn't. Yeah. Two people somehow were close to break even, which doesn't seem possible either, to be honest. I don't think you were that close, but you know. Wasn't I? No. 20 bucks? I don't know what it worked out in the end, but. Yeah, whatever. Who cares? Overall, about even. So follow this tip and you might make $20 in the season. (laughs) Otherwise, you sue Marcus. (laughs) Which Um, you could dispute if he turned up, but he didn't, so. Yeah, exactly. Now it's the law. The whole thing talking about, oh, you got to make sure you're sharp on time. And just no. <laughs> um, so outstanding stuff. Yeah, especially we even like the, even the time is set by him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We literally do everything to accommodate it. And then. Yeah. Um, Imagine watching a show where like one third of the hosts don't even bother to show up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like if you're watching this, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Exactly. If I see this Twitch account go up, I'm going to be very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. If you dare watch this, God, you got problems. <laughs> That's exactly right. All right, let's get going. So, so this, on dogs. this year, uh, we're just focusing on AFL betting. Yep. So um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, and two hundred dollars balance each. Of none. Stick to what our speciality is, and um, hopefully, some of us won't actually lose money. That would be good. Um, so the season kicks off tomorrow, obviously. Yes. Um, Richmond and maybe Carl- Marcus already went to the ground, and that's why he couldn't make it. <laughs> is there early? <laughs> it's possible. Yeah. He's excited for the big game, so he's camped out a, a day before and the Wi-Fi isn't working, and so he's not doing the pod. That must be what's going on. Yeah, I mean, without him here to... Either that or it was a horrible pegging accident. <laughs> or both. <laughs> it could be. could be both. I guess he's probably just getting pegged right now. I guess yeah. So. He got too caught up in it and, you know, couldn't stop. I mean, we said this whole pod is going to take, like, 20 minutes. Yeah. Show up on time. There's already 10 parts and he's not here. So, like, by his own rules, like, he's missed half the pot already. Yeah. So. Like, we're just here talking absolute shit to see if he'll come. But, like. All right. So, let's just get into the bets because. Exactly. He ain't yeah. coming. Yeah. He ain't going to get pegged here, so he ain't going to come. I reckon the side bet, though, should be will he come at all? Yeah, I reckon he pops on in the last minute. In the last minute, yeah, possibly. Depends how quickly we get through the, all of the games, I guess. Yeah. Well, I'll take no, and then I'll just blitz through this right now and <laughs> be done in 30 seconds. Yeah, so, I don't think is, and we're done. <laughs> to show up. I think that's pretty ambitious. Yeah. All right, well... All right, tomorrow night, Richmond Carlton. Yeah, well, I... I yeah, um... I took, I've just blindly taken the underdogs and everything. So, I mean, it just yeah. it is what it is because that's a winning strategy year on year. Do for round one, but is it a winning strategy 
with when their, Carlton yeah. have dropped, like, have players out <laughs> and they're already shit to begin with. Like possibly not the best game to be doing it, but well, trust the process. With the promo going on, it's yeah. probably, I think with the promo going on, it's impossible to have a minus EV bet on sports bet match odds. And so, yeah. of course, Marcus chooses <laughs> and do a minus EV bet and goes to one to 30. <laughs> this is a problem. He's like... Only terri- he can actually make bets that are expected to actually make some money. <laughs> the problem is that he's terrible as a host and as a participant on the show, but he's entertaining in the fact that he is... Also terrible at gambling. <laughs> Degenerate. <laughs> just, exactly. just plain stupid too. Yeah. So he's taken Richmond one to thirty nine, which, if anything, it says that Richmond are a good chance to win by forty plus. Yeah, I was going to say because it's the, they're back to normal quarter lengths this year. So yeah. one to thirty nine. Like, why are you taking Richmond one to thirty nine? Carlton aren't a good side. It, it's delusional. Like, and let, the the only po- way you the, the only way this game is interesting is if Carlton do somehow turn up and play amazingly. In which case, Carlton are the good bet. Like Richmond one to thirty nine is just complete Richmond idiocy. What was the price? Somewhere about evens, probably. It wouldn't even be that. I don't think. Not even that. Let's see. I mean, they would have had to be. All right, so Richmond a dollar twenty-seven to win. Jesus, a two ten. Richmond one to thirty-nine, two dollars ten. Two dollars yeah. eighty for the forty plus. Nine points isn't that much. Like you can, good teams can easily win forty plus. Yeah. Um. And like obviously Richmond aren't that high scoring, but still. I don't know how much I like that, but um, I I stayed away from this match completely. Um, yeah, like, I mean, I've taken the blind. I'm going to bet it would be Carlton just because of the odds. Um, yeah. The odds and the blind, the the value of the blind go on the underdogs. Yeah, exactly. This is the thing because the like if you take proper odds um, in round one, underdogs show a profit year on year. Yeah. Um, Which so is like, why I've just blindly just taken every that, single one. Follow that tip. Just go about all the underdogs in round one on the exchange. Plus, you only got to hit one or two in this promo, paying the seven dollars. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. The promo is a ridiculous promo. Yeah, both teams can get paid out. Like, yeah, I mean, it's where plausibly they've paid out on both sides a couple of minutes into the game. If you, I mean, if you hit one of these promo, if you hit one of them when it's in the promo, just on that alone, you should hit enough across the others to cover or win just in general. Yeah, you don't need to hit much to actually win. Depending on which ones, because some are like obviously heavy favorites versus um, some that are closer. But like, yeah, you hit two of these major underdogs and you're well in front. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, which yeah. is something that, um, yeah. Similar strategy, strategy to that. I picked three underdogs. Yeah. Is- so the next, well, this is going to the next game because uh, Marcus is bet into the next game and I, so have I. So I've taken Collingwood who are the underdogs slightly. Um, I, the underdogs. Okay. I'm actually going to bet that myself. That's, um, <laughs> I think it was like a dollar ninety each when I looked at it on. We're um, two ten now. Yeah, I can see it now. I just put it up now. I think when I looked at it on sports bet, they were both under two dollars. I think at the MCG, I think this is one thing for Collingwood this season is last season because of coronavirus, like we didn't get to play the MCG, and I think yeah. that's a big thing for Collingwood. I think we play that ground better than most teams. Don't forget, we smashed them by like sixty points in this game last year. So now, obviously, think- things have changed and whatever, but at the same time. Yeah. Um, and like the Trelaw thing is absolutely irrelevant. Yeah. Look, he's a decent footballer, but like that's it. You're saying that Ollie Henry isn't an equal replacement. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe you will be. No, but like the thing yeah. about Trelaw legitimately, though, right, is like he's just an accumulator. Like he's not that damaging, really. Yeah. Like, yeah, gets, yeah. I'm not saying he's not a good player. He's a good player. I'm just saying he's not like. 
an actual superstar. Like someone like Sidebottom uses the ball better than Trelaws. Like but Sidebottom's out as well. Yeah, he is, but I was just giving him as an example. Um, <laughs> like what I'm saying is like there's better players in the team who I'd be more more concerned about than Trelaw. Trelaw going didn't bother me at all. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the way the club handled it was embarrassing, but um, I feel like they, there was more shit that went on that they just don't say. Um, it's just salary cap. That's what it is. Yeah, well, it's, Marcus is confident in him to go the oh, 1 to 39 into the over 164.5. So high scoring game, yet close. But why is he saying it's high scoring? Based well, he's gone over, so. Yeah, but based on what Collingwood did last season, I don't understand why you'd take that either. Love to hear um, it thought process on some of these things. The sports bet have um, their, one of their tips is the unders. So. <laughs> and I know who's worse though, sports bet tips or Marcus. Yeah, it's, it's very hard. It's interesting to track. The <laughs> full season. Marcus versus sports bet insights. Who's more money, sports bet tips or Marcus? Probably Marcus, to be fair, because it's yeah. hard to it was, but um, um, but yeah, that game's over. Then I've taken Fremantle to beat Melbourne. I think this is a good bet actually because Melbourne is sketchy at the best of times. So, and Fremantle do seem to be on the come up, but again, who the fuck knows? But yeah, the look, dogs. I agree. But it's just like 258, it's not that long. And the thing about Fremantle is, I'm not sure, not sure how committed. <laughs> Jesus, I don't know if I can say that. I'm not sure how committed they are, but it's sort of how I feel about it. Probably um, more committed than um, Marcus. <laughs> Will they show up? I mean, they could be, they may not show up. Going to. It's 20 past. The pod's meant to be over. Yeah. Um, no, but I mean, Freeman, will they play turn up for the game or will they stay home? So I'll do a better job than Marcus. <laughs> at least I'll <at> come. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Melbourne aren't Melbourne aren't a good team. No, they're not a good team. They're not terrible anymore, but they're not a good team. Um, yeah, but I mean, Melbourne last year were a good bet against no matter who they played because they could easily throw any game, basically. So, yeah, I mean, taking Melbourne at um, the one fifty one that they are on sports bet is just disgraceful. Um, yeah. All right, well, then the uh, next game we have is Essendon Hawthorne. Now, Essendon and the underdogs slightly, which is a little bit of a surprise, I reckon, based on last year. Yeah. Do we think Dyson Happel's actually going to get back to playing decent footy or not? That's a big thing for them. I don't know. I literally did no analysis other than basically just blind underdogs. Well, the only reason, the only analysis I did was when I was doing dream team analysis. It wasn't specifically for the pod. It was just one of the guys that I noticed was a completely cooked last year, but maybe he'll come back this year. Um, that's what makes the that's what makes the podcast so good is the fact that one person doesn't show up and the other two didn't do any analysis. <laughs> Done enough analysis to be able to talk shit for twenty minutes about footy. Yeah. <laughs> Plus the insights of like, just, I mean, it's impossible. It's it, it's obviously possible, but it's nearly impossible to lose if you're betting underdogs with this promo. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're not getting horrendous odds, the promo is going to be enough to to make your bets possibly. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Me- Look, if I was betting anyone, it would be Essendon because Hawthorne, I'm still, I mean, not that I'm like, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not that I trust Essendon, but like I really don't trust Hawthorne. So yeah. Essendon an underdog, yeah, it's probably good enough. Then we have um Geelong actually. What's before that? Huh? No, we have Brisbane Sydney. Adelaide Geelong is before Essendon and Hawthorne. Oh, well there you go. Yeah. Um quality tip. The quality <laughs> Just quality pod. It's just a hundred percent quality. So yeah, I've taken Adelaide. I mean, clearly they're going to get it done this week. Much better side than Geelong. So it's just free money at four dollars. You know they were actually okay at the end of last season. I mean, it's still 
At the end of last season, they were okay. And if you're getting four bucks with the promo, I do actually do think that's an all right bet. Yeah, yeah, but still, I mean, Geelong should still smash them realistically. Yes, they should. I'm not going to argue that. Not that it's worth betting on Geelong at $1.25, but anyway. Next game we got is Brisbane versus Sydney. Now, uh, you're in on this one. Yeah. We've both taken Sydney. Yeah, Sydney over $4. Um, like, that's it's just simply good enough for the, uh, with the promo on top of it, basically. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I genuinely think that they got no chance of winning, but at the same time, yeah, look, metaphorically speaking, no I chance, but you know, they got a chance. But I, I, I tend to agree with that, but I just think any team like four dollars plus with this promo is probably a decent bet. Like, I could have taken North Melbourne too, but it's just I do actually think Porter are a pretty decent side now, so yeah, again, I think that so we just go on to that. I've taken North Melbourne obviously, and um. I, I yeah I don't see North Melbourne really winning and don't even see it as almost possible for them to win. But at the same time, it's just the promos. You don't, don't need yeah. anything. You get paid five x. Like, yeah. Um. Then we got um GWS versus the Saints. It's another one which um, like GWS can be sketchy. So I took Saint Kilda. Yeah, so did yeah, I. Yeah. So Max King yeah. out being hit by a golf ball. Um, possibly that's what happened to Marcus if we look at it. Maybe. Um, yeah, um, I think St. Kilda are decent now. Um, I think they're final side. Um, Whereas GWS easily could not be, so especially the way they played last year. So. <laughs> Well, I think they'll bounce back. I think there's too much talent there for them not to. Um, yeah, and I think the other factor with all of it, with everyone that kind of underperformed last year, is the fact that how much of a difference did the hub and all that kind of stuff have, have on it? So, GWS sure. potentially, they definitely didn't go to where you would think they would have last year. So, is that just them yeah. being shit, or is there a, other factors? So, yeah, I think it's. I think it's other factors, to be honest. I think there's too much talent on the list for them not to be a final side, honestly. Like, you don't even yeah. have to be good to make finals. Well, they should have been, except for if they didn't drop Cornelio for that game. Well, it was a blunt game. Yeah, but they lost by less than a goal. Did they? I can't remember the game. Yeah, I so Amazon have the thing on the behind the scenes of like, like last oh, year. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. They dropped him and that seemed to like really shatter him. Like even though he was like positive and stuff, he was clearly messed up by it. And I don't think it achieved anything. So no, dropping a guy for one game, I don't think it really does much. Like but yeah, and then when you go on to lose by less than a goal, you drop your captain, like mm. he would have barely any influence and he would have changed the game. So Yeah. Yeah, big call. Can come back to bite you if you do something like that as a coach. Yep. Well, the final game is West Coast versus Gold Coast. The Coasts. Yeah. This is an interesting one. Gold Coast, like, they're not good, but they're not $4.45 bad. No, and with <laughs> Rao back and that kind of stuff, like... They're not so bad that they should be massive underdogs in these and games. And West Coast was sketchy last year. And yeah, especially, especially early on. The year. They started horrendously. It's like this this price is ridiculous. Like it's just completely out of line. Um, I don't really understand, to be honest. Um, I think there's just sort of a lot of hype with how West Coast were near the end and Gold Coast sort of tailed off, but I don't think they're, they should be anywhere near that price. I think that's absurd. Um, so I was very happy to get on that one. Yeah. So, well, that rounds us out. Um, what an entertaining um, podcast without the host. Yeah. Just add uh, value to everything. So. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so from the three of us, it's goodbye. <laughs> Just remember, you can always sue Marcus for his tips. <laughs> All right. I think that'll wrap it up. Yep. See you next week, everybody. Let us know what you think. Yeah. Exactly. Let us know what you think of Marcus. Because Marcus's performance. Yeah. Best on ground. The main thing that we want to know about.